Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is time for a sap chat, and this is like, honestly, if you count the, all the video, yeah, this is like <laughs> take number four. Okay, I had a stressy week, but I really didn't have much going on that would be interesting to talk about. I don't know how these daily vloggers do it, because I'm not interesting enough to have something to talk about once a week, let alone all every day. Um, but anyway, uh, I want to bring forth positivity, positivity, especially since I kind of ranted and whined last week. So, um, well, I guess the topic of this video isn't all that, isn't all that positive. Although, I'm hoping that you guys might even, um, might even be able to inspire me a little bit. So um, this was going to be two videos. I was going to do a video, my regular Snapchat video, and then I was also filming a video on crafty regrets, things I purchased that I regret, um, to kind of go along with a video I posted a couple weeks ago about um, the four crafty gifts I got that I didn't really want or think I'd use, but turned out I use every single day, and they're like the, some of the most valuable um, tools and equipment I have in my studio. So I thought this would be kind of funny. This is, you know, this is all in good fun. I'm not bashing any of these companies or any of these products. They're just not right for me. I kind of regret them, but don't completely regret them because I still have them. Um, so I just thought it'd be kind of fun because sometimes if you just see something through somebody else's eyes, it is, uh, it's good. So I might see something that I haven't been able to find a use for, that didn't live up to my expectations, but you might see it and you be like, you know, Lindsay, I use it for da 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 da, and it works great for me. Have you tried that? And that might be what I need to get more use of it out of it. Because even though they're crafty regrets, I haven't gotten rid of them. I kept them because I see some sort of potential, or they're a reminder of me to think twice before purchasing. So it's not a regular sat chat, uh, but I thought it'd be kind of just kind of fun to do this because. Um, yeah, I didn't really have anything to talk about this week. So my first crafty regret um, is the Teresa Collins stamp maker. Now I got, I, I wanted this so badly and um, I kept researching it and it looked like it was gonna be just a thing for whenever I wanna make like return address stamps or just any sort of custom stamps that I can't buy or can't find. I could make exactly what I wanted and I was so excited. And when I saw the kit go on sale for, I'm thinking it was around a hundred, maybe it was more, I don't remember exactly, but um, it was enough for me to really think it over. I jumped on it and it came with this UV light box, which actually my daughter uses for her gel nails now. So that's still getting used. Um, and it came with like the, the transparency film you need, some instructions. It came with the little packets of, um, these are refills, but uh, this one has the pictures of the It comes with little packets for you to put in the machine. And it comes with this little thingamabob that you put the sachets in. It was like, it, it was kind of, it was kind of neat. You could make stamps, stencils, or embossing plates. And you would make transparencies. You print them on your inkjet printer on their special film so it'd be dark enough and then you'd be able to make your stamps. And um, this, the, the stuff that came with it, the sachets, the stamp packets that came with it worked great. I made all sorts of wonderful stamps. I was so pleased. So I ordered some refills and then um, none of the refills would, would work very well. It's like the timing was off and I ruined so many trying to get the new timing right. I don't know if they changed the formula or what, but um, as I was doing some figuring it out, it occurred to me and the company was fine. The company's great. I contacted them with a problem and I said, these don't seem to be the same as what came with my machine. And they sent me some new refills. So that was fine, but um, I definitely realized this wasn't for me in the fact that it was so fiddly and had so much a uh, learning curve and it seemed like I would like underexpose one and then overexpose one. Sometimes it took me two or three tries to get it right. So I was, I definitely had some buyer's remorse. I still kept it because I have the, some refills left and if I, in that event where I really want to make a custom stamp, I can do that. But um, I haven't made a stamp in years because honestly, if I can find something similar to purchase already made, I'm gonna do that because it's cheaper and it's easier and you're guaranteed <laughs> a good result. So that's probably, whenever I think of like crafty regrets, that's the thing that comes to mind. I think the Image Pack Company is good. I think Teresa Collins is a good designer. I just think that this particular, um, Package is a, is a is a regret for me. Maybe not for you, but uh, but that was for me. So, like I said, I, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with any of the things that I'm going to mention today. But um, but I thought I'd mention it. So this is another one. This is total. This is a total regret. <laughs> and I picked this up probably. Oh my gosh, it was probably like five years ago. It's a 600 page sketchbook by Art Alternatives. The sucker is huge. It's like I don't know, 12 by. 
11 or something. It's it's big, it's heavy, it's like, I don't know, it weighs about the same as like two jugs of milk or something. It's it's pretty honking, pretty heavy, pretty dense, too big for you to be like carrying around with you. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this. Um, I guess I was seeing the potential. I thought, oh, 600 pages, 600 times to get it right, 600 times to, you know, hone my skills and, and perfect my drawing and all that. I don't really sketch in sketchbooks that much. I'll sketch something lightly with pencil and then paint it. I'm more of a sketch with paint type person than a sketch with a pencil type of person. And these, this paper's thin. It just wouldn't quite, uh, quite perform. And, and shall we see how many pages I've done in this, how many pages I've completed in this, you know, honking book that I had to have. I had to have it. The minute I saw somebody using it online, I had to own it. Ridiculous. So we've got an art journal page on page one. All right, that's okay. Good start. Embrace the journey. I'm getting ready for this journey, the 600 page journey here. Very optimistic. Looks like I cleaned off some stencils here. Uh, looks like I cleaned off some more stencils here. That's the seed, right? That's you start. That's the start of a journal page, isn't it? I think I also realized around this time in my life that I'm not really an art journaler. And I've got a sketch of some looks like ornamental corn, and I crapped out on that drawing very quickly. And the ink bled through <laughs> to like the next few pages. So, and that was that. That's all I've done in that book. $24.95, I believe I paid for this. It's funny how much I can remember how much I paid for my regret for purchases, but uh, definitely, I probably did get $24.95 for the fun on that first page that I did in there, but uh, the quality of the paper wasn't what I wanted. What was I thinking? This was definitely a case of going for quantity over quality. That is a pitfall of mine. I try to be better about it, but uh, yeah, I, I tend to go for, I, especially in the past, I would go for quantity over quality. One thing I've noticed about myself, though, is I also have a hard time using something I really like if I don't have backups, um, which is ridiculous. I should use what I like and then just buy another tube or another whatever when I've used it up. But, um, you know, it's a process and we don't know these things about ourselves until we buy ridiculous things like 600 page, you know, 20 pound sketchbooks. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm not coming off as crabby because I'm like... These products make me laugh. It makes me laugh to look at these to think, oh my word, Lindsay, what were you thinking? So one thing that that would make me spend, I don't want to say foolishly, because I usually would research these products, but sometimes I would be a little bit, well, I guess because I only go to a stamp show once a year, it's actually been a couple of years since I've been, um, I would save up and I would bring cash and I would spend more than I typically would shopping because I'd have to drive five hours five hours to the stamp show I'm gonna be with my friends and we egg each other on and anyways we buy foolish stuff. So this year I actually researched and I knew I wanted a doily die and this was probably like eight years ago or something. It was the first stamp show I went to and um, or maybe it was the second. I can't remember but I knew I wanted a very dainty delicate doily die. I wanted to be able to die cut a doily that was more delicate and dainty than what I could purchase at like you know a party supply store. So I researched and I found this beauty. This is a Cherry Lynn nautical doily. Um, oh I paid $19.95 for this. I knew that but I actually have the, have the ticket on there. Uh, so this is an extremely detailed die. It's the most detailed die I own because I learned my lesson. I don't think I've purchased a detailed die since this one. But um, I had a really hard time cutting this. It would be so tedious to cut this with my big, big shot. I would have to keep putting it in, flipping it over, turning it around, shimming it. And I mean, it was like eight to 10 passes through my die cut, the die cut machine before I could get a good impression. Now my die cutter's older. It was put out before the really intricate dies came out. Um, and I since then have bought the Sizzix Precision Plate, which was, I think I paid another 20 bucks for that <laughs> to go with this so I could cut this stupid thing. Um, and I still have to shim it a little bit. That does make it a lot easier, but it's, you know, this, I, I learned something about myself with this purchase, which was I don't like fiddly, intricate die cuts, just like I don't like fiddly stamp making machines. I don't like fiddly technology. Um, and that's something I learned by this purchase. So that's a thing. When you buy something and you have buyer's remorse, think of what you learned from that because that's a positive that you can take away from it. Another positive you could take away would be gifting it to somebody else if you know somebody else can use it. So with this next one, this is a recent regret. Um, I picked these up, I don't know, it wasn't that long ago. It was probably like within the last six months to nine months. And I wanted to try the Uniball Mitsubishi Uni, Uni or Uniball? 
colored pencils. I'd heard some really good things about them, and I'd only seen them in really big packs, and I didn't want to invest $150 to try these pencils. I wanted just a small pack, and I didn't see them open stock anywhere, so when I saw these on Amazon, I thought, oh, this would be great. I'll get this set of 12. It wasn't that expensive. I think it might have been 12 or $15. I thought that'll be great. I'll be able to try it and see what I think. I don't really need to add um, another full set to my collection, but I was curious about these pencils and I wanted to try them. And so I think it was, and I, and I swatched them and I'm like, gosh, these aren't really that impressive. What are people talking about? What, why do people think these are so great? And then um, I think I was showing this in a sat chat and a viewer said, oh, those are the 880s and you want the 800 or some other, it was some other series. So these are more for school children. These are a kid's grade product. And I'm like, well, that explains the way they perform. Um, so I could have returned it. So I was within the return window for Amazon, but I know a lot of times with Amazon returns, when you return um, like, inexpensive products, they just throw them away. So it was my mistake. They didn't ship me the wrong thing. I thought I was ordering the right thing, but the information was there. I made the mistake, not Amazon. And um, so I figured I will just pass this along to like a, uh, uh, I have a friend with a daycare, I'll probably pass this along to them. I will, I will sharpen them up and, and give them a go before I do that just to see. But, um, but yeah, that was, that was on me. That was all me. So, you know, I didn't feel right returning it when it was my mistake. And also, I didn't want to be responsible for that going to waste when they're perfectly good. They're just not what I thought I was buying. So the next thing was something I bought because I liked a related product a lot. I um, One product that, uh, that I bought that surprised me and how much I liked it was the Distress Oxide ink pads. I didn't think I would really like them that much, but when I was doing some work for Rubber Stamp Tapestry, they had um, they had just gotten in the, the the first 12 pads of the Distress Oxide inks, and they asked me if I wanted to try them. And so I figured out, oh, why not? I'll give them a try, and I love them. So I ordered the reinkers, I ordered the next 12 pads when they came out, and reinkers for those. And, I, and what I really liked about them is because they were almost, I actually have them right here. I like them because they're opaque, and you can just kind of swipe them across your paper or put them, use like foam blenders to apply them, but they're like paint. They, they're they almost like using acrylic paint or gouache and it's just very quick and easy. They work well on cardstock. They just, um, they're just a great way to put a lot of color down and it was like paint without having to clean a brush. I loved these. I didn't use them for stamping, all for like backgrounding and inking techniques, but man, I just loved these ink pads a ton. I was really surprised because I have some of the original just distress, distress pads distress inks and they're fine I don't love them these I really loved and so I heard the sprays just come out now I actually went to a booth at a stamp show to get I wanted to get an orange and yellow because the first 24 colors I didn't want to get the whole set I didn't feel like I needed them they were I liked how they released them because the first 12 all the colors were really different from each other then the next 12 the colors were really different from each other so i felt like i had a really good variety i feel like they they released the most versatile colors first and so then i just bought a yellow and an orange because i felt like that really rounded out what i had and i didn't really feel like i needed the full set um because i you know i didn't because i know i was going to buy the rankers too and that just really adds up so i was really happy with these so when i saw when i was there buying the ink pads they actually had a deal going where it was like buy it was buy something, get one free. It was either buy three, get one free, or buy, I think it was buy three, get one free. And um, I bought the two pads, the two reinkers, and then I saw the Distress sprays. And um, of course I'm gonna buy like whatever it was to get the free ones, you know? I'm not gonna let some, you know, partial discount there sitting there on the table, right? So I'm like, well, I'm gonna try some Distress Oxide sprays. So I think I bought on day one, it was a two day show, on day one I bought it, I bought like a handful. And I was looking at them and I'm like, you know, that's a really good price. I really, you know, if I'm going to do this, I might as well do it, right? Might as well go whole hog. I bought 19. I bought 19 of these suckers. I don't like them. <laughs> well, I think, you know, and I think honestly, I didn't really give them a fair shot because um, there's a, I didn't notice it when I was buying it, but there is a little warning on the bottom of this bottle. that says warning cancer prop65warning.ca.gov. And that didn't, and I didn't notice that. And I figured, why would they, it's a spray product. They have to put like safe things in spray products, which I think it is. I don't think there's really anything in here that will harm you. But a viewer had reached out to me and said, what do you think about the cancer warning on that? I'm like, what? And so, cause I mean, like I'm pretty, I'm pretty nervous about spray applying things. Um, 
I make sure I like to spray apply watercolor, so I always make sure I'm not using anything with cadmium or cobalt or any um, potentially heavy metal toxic chemical. So that really I think took the wind out of my sails a bit and made me nervous to use them because I'm kind of I'm kind of a hypochondriac to be honest. And um, I my studio's in my home, so I've got pets, I've got kids, I've got a spouse. I don't want to have you know potentially dangerous chemicals floating in the air even though my studio is in the basement and our living areas are upstairs still that made me kind of nervous and i think because i started off on my journey with these being kind of nervous it made me not want to use them and i have seen tutorials where people have like you know they take the cap off or they paint it on or they they you know take kind of like speckle it on like that and not spray it but it's like i bought sprays for the convenience of sprays like the pads i like the convenience of swiping the pad on there that's what i love about those if i can't use these safely the way they're meant to be used then that just kind of take the wind out of my sails now obviously i don't think ranger would put something out that was gonna harm people like by spraying applying it but uh but that made me nervous i did talk to a friend of mine who's a chemist who said they they have to label that so they can sell it in California, um, which is a huge part of our population in the United States. So, and I have used it, I kind of got over that, but I've, I've used it, but they still didn't give me that gratification that the pads did. And I think it might be because there's so much more water in this. And I like to use it, like, I like to do these backgrounds on, you know, sheets of cardstock, big sheets of Bristol, big sheets of sulfite drawing paper. I'll use like kind of bigger, cheaper stuff and then cut it down. And the sprays don't work as well on that cheaper substrate where the ink pads are just fine and cherry wine on the uh, on the cheaper substrates. So um, I didn't get rid of these. I haven't sold them or given them away because yeah, I see the potential. I do want to use them more, but they were kind of a letdown, I have to say. So if I could, probably if I could go back and not buy them, to begin, well, then again, I'd be curious about them. So I see so you can't have regrets. You can't really have regrets because life is a journey and you learn by your mistakes and you learn by your failures. You learn more from your failure. You learn more from the messes than the successes. I did a podcast on that. So anyway, I got 19 of these suckers. Let me know how you use them in the comments below. Give me some ideas because they're all almost full. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Okay, so at that same stamp show, I fell prey to another gotta have it item. And sadly, it was another one from Tim Holtz. I swear I have nothing against this man. It probably sounds like I've got an axe to grind. I do not. I think he's, he seems like a, a lovely human. I don't know him, but he seems, he seems delightful. So I do not have an axe to grind with this man, but I do about this product. The Stampers Anonymous Glitter Duster. Now, I know who this is for. Let's say you find applying glitter to be too tidy and neat and you would like to throw a little chaos into the mix. This is the product for you because once you spray this, even though it has a lovely little nozzle that is supposed to direct your glitter, it goes everywhere. You're going to be breathing in glitter before you're done and that probably should have a Prop 65 warning on it, but um, but it doesn't. So, and a couple booths down after purchasing this lovely... Uh, this fine glitter duster from a reputable vendor. I saw the same thing unbranded. I think it was from the beauty industry. So all I can think is they probably sell this for people like strippers to apply glitter to themselves. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Just like, <laughs> just like inflated in price and sold to <laughs> crafters. Isn't that always the way? Like all these, all these like blending brushes that we have, they're all like, they came from the beauty industry. You know, these are like foundation brushes. I only know that because my daughter is like into makeup and stuff. So I'm like, hey, those look familiar. And she had some and I'm like, hey, look at that. That works just fine. And there are people at the stamp show selling the, the beauty, the makeup ones for, uh, for cheap too. So whatever, it's all, nothing's new. Nothing's new under the sun. But you know what? I do use this every year and I use it to glitter ornaments and you know, my house because it's Christmas. Might as well glitter everything. Uh, and it does. It does a fine job at glittering everything. So, and I laugh every time I use it at what a fool I was <laughs> to purchase this thing. But, uh, so I gotta say, I guess I did get my enjoyment money's worth out of it because I'm still laughing talking about this thing. So just be warned, if you like neat and you like your glitter contained, this is not the product for you. Maybe I'm using it wrong. Could be. I wouldn't say. And maybe I'm using all the stuff wrong. It could definitely be the case. So the next thing, you guys are gonna think, I, I do not hate Tim Holtz or his products. I just said how much I love the Distress Oxide pads, right? Well, I am kind of a sucker. I think what it is, is I, as, as I see the demos, like from, and usually what happens is I'll watch the, back in the day, you'd watch the, the demos done at the um, on YouTube that were that were filmed at 
Creativation and CHA. And when these Distress Crayons came out, I thought, boy, those look really fun. I love, I, at this point, I had the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s, which, you know, it's probably not fair to compare anything to those. Those are just sublime. They are perfection. So I find that most watercolor crayons I am disappointed with. Um, any gel sticks I'm usually a little disappointed with because they either are not as good as the Karen Dosh or they remind me of like the cheapo, um, like the cheapo kids gel crayons. And sometimes they don't seem as good. And with the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, to me, they didn't feel as good as gelatos. And they definitely didn't feel as good as Karen as a Neo Color 2s because they were kind of transparent. They didn't really dissolve very well. They just felt like, uh, they just felt kind of low quality and you didn't get that much product in here for the size of the packaging, which is which is kind of a pet peeve. Like when you, well, with the gelato, it's a short little stubby stick, but it's all, it's almost all product in there. And with this, I mean, this is fairly unused because I didn't really like them, but that's all the product that you've got from this big stick. So I think that kind of like, kind of soured me against these at the beginning, but I really didn't like using them or the effect I was getting with them. And, but I didn't get rid of them because I think I'm missing something with them. I do know you can do some resists over them once they set up a little bit, kind of like an oil pastel. So, um, but then again, I have oil pastels that I like more. It's almost like I have types of products that these could be similar to, but I like all those other products more. But I still think I'm missing something with these, so I have held on to them. I only bought the first three sets that came out. It was at a stamp show. I was teaching for, um, for a vendor, so I was able to buy these uh, at cost for wholesale. Um, I'm so glad I didn't pay full price for them, but I, uh, but still, I kind of regret. But then again, I wouldn't know if I liked them or not if I didn't try them. And you need kind of a few colors to know whether you're going to like them or not. So this was a regret, but. But then again, do I really regret buying them? Because otherwise I wouldn't know if I would like them or not. That's the thing with art supplies. You don't really know if you're gonna like them or not until you try them. Hopefully you can try them um, before you buy them. That would have been smart, but there wasn't anybody demoing them because they were really new and nobody really knew what to do with them yet. So that would be ideal if you could go to a stamp show and try something before you actually buy it. None of these things actually had demos going that I could try. So, um, <laughs> so that was that. So I get a couple, I think those are all my big, my big regret purchases. I do have a couple honorable mentions though. And this first one is something that, you know, I gotta say, I honestly enjoyed the process of using these. And I enjoyed the way they looked, but I did find that they didn't, I didn't get the satisfaction from my finished projects that, that I thought I would. So when I was starting to see letterpress come out, this was a long time ago. This is the Lifestyle Crafts. I don't even know what year. I actually took the, uh, I cut the boxes down and I put them in the baggies so I could store more. I have like a, one of those 12 by 12, one of those bins that fit in these cubbies, just full of letterpress plates and letterpress papers and little business cards and bookmarks and all the things you can make with them. Um, and I bought, I don't think I paid full price for any of them. AC Moore had them and I would buy some with my coupons. Then when they clearanced them out, I bought everything on clearance. And um, I love the idea and the classiness of having the, the inked depressed design on paper. But what I didn't realize when I went down this path was that you had to buy the special paper for this. You had to print making paper. So either Reeves BFK or buy the letterpress branded stuff. I bought a bunch of the branded papers when it was on clearance because it was cheaper than Reeves BFK. Um, and it just, uh, I didn't realize that you had to use special paper. I thought I could use any cardstock, like embossing folders. Embossing folders are a much more impactful payout than these little plates were. But I still kind of like them, and I think I will probably use them again. But I'm really not as fancy as I thought I was when I bought these. I wanted to be, this was Fantasy Lindsay. Fantasy Lindsay wants to be fancy and, and send out letterpressed invitations to dinner parties. But reality, Lindsay can barely cook, and nobody likes to eat <laughs> <laughs> see what she makes. So, uh, and I'm, I'm an antisocial hermit. So the dinner parties are kind of like off the table. So, uh, so yeah, fantasy Lindsay purchase. I'm keeping them. I'm in like a little crafty hoard, but actually I don't even regret them. I, I regret not enjoying the finished products. I bought the inks and everything and I just could never get that really professional inked look. I'd always get a little smudge in the like the border or something. It was just very difficult to get a perfect look with a home embossing, um, a home letter pressing system, I found. Um, but it's kind of sad because I kind of want to be fancy dinner party hosting socialite Lindsay, but I'm just, you know, basement hermit Lindsay. We gotta, we gotta be who we are. I am what I am, you know? <laughs> what are you looking at? I am what I am. 
That's what you're here for, right? And then honorable mention goes to all of the Davardi glass rods I bought after I got a bead torch for my birthday. I loved making glass beads, but, um, and I, I was so proud of myself. I made these beads, they're so pretty. And I did a video of making like one of my first beads, like not even like, this is just like me making my first beads. It's nothing fancy. I'm not the queen of bead making. I'm not telling you what to, how to live your life. This is me making a bead. And of course the, the internet comes with their opinions. And, um, but one of the opinions was you need to wear these special glasses or you're going to go blind because you'll burn your retinas off looking at those the flame so that freaked me out and then i was like well i don't want to go blind i need to see to make a living so that kind of put the kibosh on my bead making so my husband actually got me these goggles and Waldo's goggles and a, a heavy duty apron to wear when I was using them and then I went to use my torch again and it wouldn't light and when I got my bead making kit um, the torch was a dud but they replaced it so it was no big deal uh, but that torch didn't last long either it was like the little the little flint or something the little, um, the little it wouldn't make the spark but I, I was too chicken to like use a lighter to light it because I'm just I'm neurotic I'm a like I'm a safety nerd. I can't. <laughs> Safety's cool in my book. And I just uh, I just couldn't do it. So I have all these glass rods. They're actually very pretty to look at. But these were also very difficult to use glass. I was a novice. I was a newbie and I was trying to use this glass that is very, it was cheap. And the thing was, I wanted variety. I wanted like, so I, I think I bought like these big grab bags. Um, and I knew that their glass was not the best glass in the world, but I'm like, how different can glass be? So I bought cheap Davardi glass. It was kind of shocky. You can kind of even see where it's like kind of, I don't know, can you see it kind of like splintered there? I think I was using it and sometimes it would just break when you're melting it on the, on the, on your mandrel. So that was kind of a bummer. The Diamond Tech glass that came with my kit and I, I did purchase another tube of that. That stuff was so much easier to work with and I wished I'd just stuck with that. But, um, but you know, it's like I have this fear of running out with supplies and if I think I'm gonna like something, I wanna buy extra so I, don't, so I can use and create with abandon and not worry about running out. That's how I ended up with a 600 page sketchbook of low quality paper and 19 distress sprays, sprays. It turns out I probably could have figured out I didn't like them with three distress sprays, but no, there was a good deal and I better stock up because what if I love this thing then I need to have the stuff to use. So, so tell me about your neuroses in the comments below. Tell me what you bought and you've regretted, or tell me, give me some ideas on projects with these. Tell me how you use these things so that I will not feel so wasteful hanging onto them. Um, and that's the other thing with the distress space. Well, it's like, if I give it to somebody, I gotta let them know that, hey, there's a cancer warning on this. Is that, you know, that, so you kind of feel weird about passing it on as well. Just, uh, <laughs> I'm probably overthinking things. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this modified sat chat. And I can't wait to hear what you think in the comments below. If you're in the path of the huge snowstorm like we are, we're up to two feet of snow here today. Um, stay safe, stay warm, check on your neighbor, love each other, be kind, and we'll see you next time. Happy crafting and bye.